you generate 200 liters of sewage every day and in this video i'll show you how 90% of that sewage is converted into usable water with me is aditya rao from green tivity he generates 1 crore liters of water every single day how are you doing this magic aditya at green tivity we operate and run sewage treatment plants in bangalore and we'll be glad to take walk you through one of them we are right now in the very first step of the sewage treatment plant where all the apartment waste comes into something called as the bar screen chamber aditya can you tell me a bit more about the bar screen chamber so we have a bar screen chamber here that is the pipe that brings all the sewage from this particular apartment into this particular chamber in the bar screen chamber we have a mechanical filter where you know we screen all the unwanted material this is a residential apartment so obviously residents are flushing down debris which they are not supposed to flush down the drains for example you know condoms pet hair human hair uh sanitary pads pregnancy test kits and all this nasty stuff gets uh flushed down their drains in their apartments instead of being disposed of in the reject waste which most apartments collect separately so this is the stage where we remove all this unwanted debris because onward flow of this debris can you know clog up the motors and the pumps can damage the plumbing so on and so forth so if you look around down here this is all the debris that is unwanted you know we are dealing with an apartment here and you will see if you look down upon all this that you know there are shampoo packets there are <laughs> you know all kinds of things which we as human beings are not supposed to flush down our toilets So apart from this you removing all these debris what else gets filtered in the bar screen chamber this is it in the bar screen chamber onward from the bar screen chamber you will have an oil and grease trap or an oil and grease chamber where all the kitchen oils and fats and greases gets skimmed away okay so even this is not supposed to be flushed down basically technically yes even this is not supposed to be flushed down but uh, uh, but people flush it down now onwards from the bar screen chamber and the oil and grease trap all the sewage flows into what you call as the raw sewage tank and this is a tank where you know the sewage load is equalized uh, because you know you get varying degrees of sewage so what do you what do you mean by sewage load is equalized so at different times of the day the characteristic of the sewage changes the biological load of the sewage changes because we do not know who is having a bath or who is using the toilet you know who is running a washing machine or a dishwasher so in the equalization of the raw sewage tank the load gets equalized and the sewage is mixed so that on, for onward treatment you get a consistent biological load so you basically from here onwards treating it becomes easier yes from here onwards you get consistent quality of sewage okay. which you can treat the hallmark of our stps is right from the raw sewage tank onwards there is no smell there is no odor there is no vapor or gas generated how are you making sure that there is no smell from here onwards how have you taken care of that nikhil i'll be glad to tell you this but unfortunately after that i'll have to dump you in the tank <laughs> so it's proprietary guys let's move on so all the equalized sewage is coming to this particular region so can you tell me what this is so we have the anoxic zone here not many stps uh, sewage treatment plants will have an anoxic zone the anoxic zone is something that the authorities have recommended as per the bs6 uh, uh, regulations so in an anoxic zone what happens is your bnr removal biological nutrient removal that is the excess nitrogen the excess ammonia the excess phosphorus gets removed so basically in an anoxic zone you are pumping one part of raw sewage you are pumping back the return activated sludge and you are pumping some amount uh, of the aerated sewage into an anoxic zone and if you pan down and look into the anoxic zone you will see that you know the reaction that is happening here is just like that of milk splitting and that's the indication that the biological nutrient content is being liberated okay cool onwards from the anoxic zone the sewage flows into the aeration tank now an aeration tank basically is the heart 
of any sewage treatment plant. It is here where all those millions of tiny microscopic microbes, you know, digest the sewage. And for the microbes to survive, you have to aerate or oxygenate uh, the sewage. So the microbes grow here and depending on the condition of the sewage, you know, there is a rhyming and timing of how long it takes the microbes to digest or to eat away that sewage. So what the microbes are doing here is basically what earthworms do to compost, where the sewage is the food for the microbes, okay, and they eat it up and the byproduct is clear water and some amount of sludge. So you are telling me the actual purification process is actually happening here to yeah. a large extent. 90% of the purification process happens here. It's a biological process and in sewage treatment terms, it is called MLSS and we measure the MLSS to get to know how healthy your STP is. So if you pan to the tank, you will see that there are equal and very even aeration happening. There are no swells of the bubbling happening. Typically in this kind of an STP, we hold the sewage in the aeration tank for 14 to 18 hours depending on, you know, what is the biological load of the inflow. So that is for our operators and for our process engineers to decide, you know, how long this batch of sewage needs to treat. So this is your secondary clarifier. So it is here where the sewage flows by gravity. There's a conical shape inside. The sludge settles down. The active sludge is transferred back to the anoxic zone. And the clear water just flows over this chamber here and goes to the filter feed tank. So here we are at the filter feed tank or the clarified water tank. We push the water or we pump the water through the sand and carbon filters down here and the water is chlorinated so it is disinfected. Can we check that out? Yeah. So the clarified water is coming here? Yeah, the clarified water from there using the filter feed pumps is pumped under pressure, 2 bar, 3 bar pressure through a sand and a carbon filter. The sand filter basically takes away or filters out any organic matter. The carbon filter takes care of odor, takes care of color. So at the end of it all, the water that you see being discharged there is the final treated water. And well, the proof of the pudding is in viewing how it is. Let me show you that. So here we are with the final sample of the water that we, of the sewage that we've treated. And Colorless, odorless, nickel, you might want to smell it. Yeah, I mean, look like pretty cool. <laughs> there you have it, guys. That's how Aditya and his team convert one crore liters of sewage into 1 crore liters of usable water like this. So if you have any questions about STPs, Aditya, where all do you guys serve? We serve basically the Bangalore and the entire South India. There you go, you can reach out to them. I'll put their contact details in the description below. And if you have any questions about STPs, please let us know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to get Aditya and his team to respond. Thank you so much for watching guys. See you in our next video.